All right, we'll give everyone a minute to get in here. Hopefully everyone's doing well. We're gonna answer some questions today. I've got a little thing on my screen here. Get this out of here. Getting closer to baseball season. Here comes everyone. Hello, Matthew. Hi, Abram. We'll say hi, Beef. Hello, Giants fan. John, what's up, True Blue? We'll say hi to everyone for a little bit here. Ollie, what's going on, Bradley? What's up, Jet? What's up, Mac? Hi, Colt. Uh, haven't announced the winner yet. I'm uh, going to do that probably tomorrow. Hi, Sam. Doing good, Michael. How are you doing? Giovanni, what's up, Charlie? Nathan? Hi, Tom. Gustavo, what's up, William? From Pass Christian, Mississippi. AMI, SSI, SSI, PPI. What's up, Toasty? What's up, Rad Rhino? Easiest way to transition from second outfield? Get a lot of reps. Treat your practice like a game. Hi, Drew Stanley. When guys are hitting batting practice, get out there, play it like a game. Why don't some college stadiums have lights? Well, we didn't have them at Wake Forest when I was there because there was a couple of houses around the stadium and they didn't want us to have lights because they didn't want us to make noise at night. Hey, what's up, Chris? Could everyone do me a favor and give this video a good old like? Hit the uh, smash the like button. We'll get it going early tonight. Eric Ayala, what's going on? Um, all right, let's see. Is Colt the cool name? I think it is. How can you improve your swing? You've come to the right place. I've made like a thousand videos on hitting. So one day when you're bored, I'd go through our hitting playlist. How do you use your legs in your swing? Watch our, our videos on loading the rear leg um i think you've got to load your, learn kind of how to load your lower body or load your back leg to be able to use it so all right favorite wood bat uh, i use a c271 louisville slugger Worst minor league stadium? Uh, I heard Bakersfield was pretty bad, but I, I luckily didn't have to play there. Is it vodka or gin? Neither. Maple. I used maple my whole career. How many through the mail requests do I get? Um, I get a decent amount. I'm not. I, I don't know exactly how much. Um. I probably, I get almost probably one a day, maybe. Not that they come every day, but, you know, I'll get, some days I'll get nothing. Some days I'll get like three or four. You're welcome, William. How to hit a curveball? Well, one, you can sit on a curveball. Um, two, you know, being able to, having a good swing um, this could take a long time to talk about. I think having a, a, a really good bat path helps. Um, I think being able to kind of control your stride and not just jump forward and keep your back leg loaded as you're striding out helps. Did you commit to Wake Forest before you got out of high school? Yes, I committed to Wake Forest um, my senior year of high school. How many stadiums have I played in? How many big league stadiums? I've probably played in about 10 big league stadiums. Uh, what stadium intimidated me, intimidated me the most? I don't think I was ever intimidated in a big league stadium. I thought uh, I thought Dodger Stadium probably had the best atmosphere that I played in. Thoughts on Camargo? What happened to him? I don't know. 
the best bat for a 13U player? You know, I don't know if there's a best bat. I think bats are all about personal preference. What kind of, you know, what do you like for a feel? Like I was a C-271 fan as a, for a wood bat, but I would never say that it's like the best bat. Um, I was a heart of the hide with Rawlings. Oh, that was Camargo that was busted with that? I didn't know that. T-ball tips. You know, we actually have to do more T-ball tips. A lot of people ask us to make more videos for, for young kids for T-ball, and I haven't yet. I'll, I'll get on that, though. What am I sipping on? This is my special drink. I can't disclose what it is. All right, we got a super chat, everyone. Oh, hold on one second. My microphone. Hopefully you guys can hear me okay. You guys hear me okay? My microphone's kind of moving around a little bit there. Um, super chat. Square Tree, thank you so much for the super chat. Hey, Matt, love the channel. Thank you. Who would you, who would want, who would you want as a manager to take you all the way? Billy Haywood, Little League, Little Big League, or Lou Brown, Major League? You have to go work. Okay. Lou Brown's one of my favorite. Well, Jimmy Dugan's up there too. So Jimmy Dugan and Lou Brown are probably my two favorite. Um, I, I, uh, Billy Haywood was awesome, but I don't think I'd pick him as my manager. Um, he can be the owner, but. Lou Brown or Jimmy Dugan? I'd go Lou Brown. Jimmy kind of harasses his players a little bit. Lou does a little also. But I, I'd want to win for Lou Brown. So let's go Lou Brown. Great question. Terrific question. <laughs> Who's going to have a better season? Better Tatis. So, I mean, you're looking at two of the best players in the league. Um, man, there's so much upside with Tatis, but Betts has obviously done it for a little bit longer. I'm afraid to pick against Tatis because he could just go bananas and have a huge year. What makes a good manager? I've had a lot of managers in my career and, um, you know, I think I think probably, you know, being able to communicate with the team um, is really important. Being able to establish, and this isn't just the manager, this is the organization, but establish some type of culture, like the right culture, is really important when it comes to the coach or the manager, depending on what sport you're talking about. Um. You know, uh, nowadays, there's so much numbers that are involved in the game, and a lot of it is probably being done by the front office. And so in-game decisions are probably a little bit... Uh, there's still a lot of in-game decisions that have to take place, but it's probably a little bit easier now because you have so many numbers to go by. And so it's probably a little bit less... Um, let's see here. I have a couple of super chats real quick. I have something in my throat that I cannot get down. Tom, thank you so much for the super chat. White Sox, World Series, and La Russa Manager of the Year. Oh, wow. Um, I like the White Sox a lot. I think they're very talented, um, you know, if they made it to the World Series, it wouldn't surprise me. I think their playoff team, uh, you know, I'll probably if I'll probably go with the Yankees to represent the AL. I think their offense is crazy good. I think their pitching staff is a is the question mark. They have a couple of, you know, they picked up a couple of guys that have been injured over the last few years. So I think it depends on how healthy they stay. If they can stay healthy, 
I'd probably take the Yankees over the White Sox, but I think the White Sox are really good. And uh, if they make the World Series, then yeah, I think that he, you know, the Rooster could be manager of the year, potentially. Evan, thank you so much for the Super Chat. What do you think the MLB and MILB will be like when the first woman is allowed to play with the men? Um, what do I think it'll be like? I'm not sure. That's a good question. Does anyone know? I'm just trying to think of um, the closest that a woman has been to, to playing in the major leagues. And I don't know. But I think that'd be pretty cool. And pretty exciting. Let's go back to the live chat. Thank you so much, everyone, for the super chats. Thoughts on the Giants? Um, I think the Giants... Uh, well, Giants are in trouble because... Everyone is in trouble in that division because no one's going to beat the Dodgers or the Padres. I think they're just loaded. So good luck to the Diamondbacks, the Giants, and and uh, the Rockies. Um, I think the Rockies probably finish in last. Diamondbacks and Giants, I guess, fight it out for third. I'm going to play. Uh, I'm going to try to get up tomorrow and play some road to the show. It would be episode 100, and I've been trying to kind of figure out, you know, what I could do special for episode 100, and I can't come up with it, so I'm just going to uh, just gonna wake up in the morning and play. Uh, people have been asking me about it, why I haven't done it as much. Uh, we're getting our basement finished. Uh, we recently moved, and if you guys remember at, at my old house, uh, the basement was where I played most of my Road to the Show, uh, did most of my Road to the Show episodes. Uh, in this house, I don't have a place to go do it. So my PlayStation is actually in the room I'm in right now. It's just our living room. But usually my wife is in here or my kids are in here. And so I can never play. And I'll wake up early sometimes and try to play. But I'll come downstairs and my kids have beat me down here. So I haven't been able to um, I haven't been able to, to record really any episodes lately. So the, the basement should be finished in a few weeks. And then I will have my, my uh, man cave back. Hall of Fame career with no ring or journeyman with a ring? Well, I think, you know, definitely World Series ring is like the ultimate accomplishment for a player. Um, I do think that, I do think if I had a World Series ring, I would want to be a contributor and feel like I contributed to that, not just kind of just sit around and just like hang out on the bench. So, um, but would I rather have a ring and kind of not contribute as much or just have a Hall of Fame career? I, mean, I don't know. There's nothing like winning a World Series. I mean, I've never won a World Series, but I've won championships at different levels, and um, it's a pretty cool feeling. I can't imagine what it would feel like in the major leagues to win a World Series. So it's a really good question. Maybe I'll make a YouTube video about that. Um, Andres, thank you so much for the Super Chat. Your best advice for a player entering MILB? Uh, I would say... I would say that I'll give the old man answer here, but it is true that your career can go very fast. I played what I play eight years and it felt like five minutes and uh, I guess I would say to enjoy it because it goes very quickly and do everything you can to um, if your goal is to play in the major leagues, which I'm sure it is then I would just do everything I can possible to fulfill that goal. I know a lot of guys that kind of were just kind of happy being a professional player and just kind of goofed around and probably didn't take it as serious as they should have. So, um, but, but I would enjoy it also. It is, uh, minor leagues can mentally can wear on you. So, um, 
Just try to have fun, enjoy playing, and good luck. Michael Lamar, thank you so much for Super Chat. Hey there, Matt. When people write you for your autograph, do you ever write a letter back to them if they ask questions? Um, I used to do that. I've been bad at that lately. What happens when I'm signing uh, through the mail is that a lot of my stuff, because I usually have people send it over to the facility that we work out in, and the, the mail piles up, and I'm very busy at this time of year, so I'll you know wait, and it'll pile up, pile up, pile up, and then I'll sign, and sometimes I've got to get through like 100 different um, envelopes. And so if I'm going through and signing and signing and signing and someone has a, a you know 15 questions, it's really hard for me to then spend like 20 minutes writing down answers. So I've been pretty bad with it lately. Not that I don't want to answer them. It's just it's just a busy time of year. And if I try to answer those questions, I mean it could take me a couple hours to fill you know the answer, all that stuff and the to get everything get all the autographs done and plus I have two kids at home screaming and yelling so yeah you can definitely tape um wood bats in high school yeah there's no rules against that my kids are sleeping they went to bed already yeah I had for commissioner Best, worst clubhouses? Well, I've only been in probably about 10 to... How many clubhouses have I been? I, mean, I don't want to sit here and count them all. I've been through 10 to 12, 13 clubhouses in the big leagues. Dodgers was the worst visiting clubhouse I've ever been in. It reminded me of like a high school clubhouse or locker room. Uh, the best was... Well, I mean, for the home, I mean, the home clubhouse in Petco, at Petco is very nice. And as far as a road um, visitor clubhouse, the best one, I don't know. Like the Rockies one is just big. It's not like great, but it's big. Milwaukee is pretty big. Um, Nationals was kind of small. The Diamondbacks was decent um where else I, where else have i been rangers was kind of kind of felt a little small we got a super chat everybody zach thank you so much for the super chat what was your favorite minor league to play in well my favorite league was probably That's a good question. Um, well, I know my least favorite was probably the PCL, which was AAA. Just a lot of travel, a lot of early plane flights. Teams are spread out across the country. It's just really wears on you physically and mentally. It's a long season. Um, I actually liked the International League, which was a AAA league. I liked it because a lot of kind of short rides, a lot of buses. I actually like buses. I'm not a big fan of getting up and flying on a plane. Um, the only thing about the International League is it's. I played in Syracuse. I, it was cold. Um, then I played in um, Rochester. It's kind of cold. I played in Norfolk. It was warmer there. So I kind of like the International League. Texas League was hot. <laughs> Not a ton of travel. That wasn't a bad league. Um, California League was good for hitters. Not a lot of travel. All right, we got a super chat. Oh, David, thank you so much for the super chat, but there's no question there, so I can't answer anything. All right. Um, being on the road, the miners, yeah, bad hotels, usually really bad hotels, the lower the miners, the worse the hotels, I don't know if it's done on purpose, but, uh, I did play in the Midwest League for a little bit, I've played in Connecticut, but not in the minor leagues, and <laughs> juice it up, my dad's well, thanks Jeff, 
Could everyone do me a favor real quick? We've got almost 300 people in here. If everybody could smash the like button, we're going to get a lot of likes. Let's do it. Let's see how many people we can get in here tonight. Thoughts on Jack Leiter? He's just amazing. There we go. Everybody hitting the like button. Thank you, everyone. Uh, different hitting stances. So I think hitting stances are are, are uh, personal preference. So, you know, I can't tell somebody how to stand, right? Like, this might be comfortable for me, for me, but not for you. This might be comfortable for you, but not for me. Um, you know, feet close together, feet spread out, uh, squatted down, standing up. It's it's a lot of uh, it's a lot of personal preference. So I think that when your stance doesn't become personal preference anymore is when it doesn't allow you to get into a good hitting position. So if I do something silly and I can't get into a good hitting position, then I need to change my stance. That's my thought on stances. Other than that, I don't tell people how to stand. Colt, thank you so much for the Super Chat. What are your thoughts on Randy or Rosarina? Um, well, I know he had a terrific year when he came up and with the playoffs and being a young player. and I think he's really talented. I haven't followed the like off-the-field stuff. I know there was some, some stuff. I, I don't have the details on that. I don't know enough. But I think as a player, he showed that he's very talented. And, um, but again, I know, I know there were some, I know there was some stuff off the field and I didn't follow it enough. Uh, thoughts on Mike Yaz. I think he's terrific. Um, we actually went to the same high school and uh, I remember watching him in high school play and what a, just a great career. Went to play at Vanderbilt and, and went to the, uh, well, went to Seattle and uh, was in the minors for a while. And then, you know, I'd love to have him actually on the, the YouTube channel. I'd love to talk to him. Um, I watched some of his giant stuff. I know they've had some mic'd up stuff. He seems like he's a, a really like intellectual player. He thinks a lot of, it, it seems like he understands his swing. He's very thoughtful when it comes to, you know, hitting approach and, and stuff like that. So I'd like to talk to him and uh, just kind of pick his brain on, what he thinks, you know, while he's hitting, some of the mechanical thoughts. Greatest hitter of all time. Thank you, Tom, for the super chat. Greatest hitter of all time. It's tough to say because there's so many great hitters, but um, man, I don't, I don't even know where to start. Like Tony Gwynn was a great hitter. Ted Williams, great hitter. Um, Pete Rose, great hitter. Barry Bonds, great hitter. Um, I, there's I don't even I don't even know. Uh, this is not vodka or uh, or water. <laughs> sorry, sorry. That made me laugh. All right, let's see here. my super chats Juan Gonzalez Juan gone I loved you Juan when I used to watch you play thank you for the videos recently my son has had a big issue with stepping out of the box if the ball is middle in it gets hit when you say stepping out of the box you mean like stepping in the bucket kind of like this way I think that's what you mean one hopefully I can help you out here so I, I think that um, when it comes to stepping out one thing that I work on with players is just being in good posture and staying in good posture so if you think about I'll go this angle it's a little bit hard so having my chest slightly over the plate having my butt out have my chest over the plate if I am in good posture like that and I can stay there I feel like when players step out they come up they get really upright this way. So I want to be in good posture. I want to stride and stay in good posture as long as I can. I will do drills where I'll put like a little, um, I use a, like up in our area, you can buy them at like Home Depot and Lowe's. They're like yard markers for the plows so the plow doesn't like tear your grass up. I'll put one of those right behind the heels of the hitter. 
and try to get them to uh, to not step on it if they step out. But again, stay in good posture, keeping your butt out, keeping your chest over will will help with that. Tyler and Drew, thank you so much for the super chats. I uh, there was no question on either of those super chats, so I can't answer anything. But hopefully, um, you didn't ask one. But thank you for the super chat. How do you stay healthy throughout a long season? Good question. It's really difficult playing baseball every day, you know, for six months out of the year and with spring training is longer and then playoffs is longer. It's really tough. I think um, getting good sleep, staying hydrated, um, you know, taking care of your body, stretching, uh, eating well um, is all part of it. You know, the higher that you play, you play in the major leagues, you get a lot of people taking care of your body. In the minor leagues, you don't. And so uh, it's a little bit easier at the big in the big leagues. But you just got to basically you can't just uh, you can't just wing it. Like you got to take take it really serious and make sure that you are aware of what your body needs. So the times that I've hurt my body. Let's say this. I pulled my hamstring once in my career. I pulled it when it was with the Nationals. And one thing that happened was in spring training, they didn't give me any days off. I just played every day, every day, every day. And uh, I could feel my hamstring was going to pop on me. Uh, but I just kept playing. And, you know, I, I probably could have done a better job of making sure that before the game I was getting stretched out a little bit better after games, maybe getting a massage. Um, and so, but I didn't, I'd never hurt my, I'd never hurt myself before. When you're young, you could just play your question about Trevor Bauer, Tyler. What did you say about Trevor Bauer? Um, when you're young, like I didn't really have to stretch a whole lot. Like I just go out and play every day in college and I play fine and my body doesn't hurt because you only play in three, four days a week. Um, but in pro ball, it doesn't work like that. Kamikaze Tanaka? I do. High school trials tomorrow, Michael? Just give it your best. Don't try to do any more than you're capable of. Just uh, focus on what the the task at hand is and play your best. And uh, believe that you're ready to go. And you'll be good. Knowing pro sports is rigged, it, it rigged. Why is pro sports rigged? Is MLB scripted? Please be honest. Is baseball the hardest sport on the planet, or you think it is? I think baseball is incredibly hard. I think every sport's hard. Baseball is an acquired skill. Like you got to be able to play it. For, you got to play it for a long time. Like a lot of sport, sports are acquired skills, but like football. Like football, I feel like not so much. I never played football in my life until I got to high school and I picked it up in like five minutes. It was like, they're going to throw this like giant ball to you. Just catch it and run fast away from the other guy. Okay, like that sounds pretty easy. Um, baseball is different, obviously. So I think it's a hard sport. I'm not going to say it's the hardest sport. But sports are not rigged. I'll, I will say that, that um, they're not rigged. But thank you for the super chat. Benedict Downing. Come on, Matt. You got to start earning some of that money. I'm trying, Benedict. And I appreciate it. You just helped me earn $5. Thanks, buddy. All right, everybody. Hey, Matt, I'm a high school baseball player, and I have a 100-mile-an-hour exit velo. Wow. Off the tee, do you think I could get recruited to a D1 school just off power? So I think that clearly being able to hit a ball 100 miles an hour off the tee means that you have the ability to hit the ball really hard and far in a game. That alone will not get you recruited. Um, that is a part of it. But you've got to be able to show that that translates to the game. So clearly you have some ability there, which is very good. Um, but the game is not played off the tee. Um, and so if you can get into the game and translate that, 
then yeah, I think you have a good chance to play D1 baseball. It is hard to hit the ball 100 miles an hour off the tee. We have a lot of players every year in our program that play D1, and a lot of them can't hit the ball 100 miles. I'd say, well, maybe one guy can hit the ball 100 miles an hour off the tee a year. You know, But we've got a lot of guys that play D1, so it's not like you have to hit it 100 miles an hour. you got to be able to play the game well. But like I said, it shows that you've got some ability. All right, a lot of super chats here. Andrew B., thank you so much for the super chat. Favorite, least favorite MLB umpire. Um, <laughs> I'll say this. This might be. This might sound weird. I don't focus on the umpires at all. I I dislike every umpire. I never talk to the umpires. You know why? Because they all piss me off. So I never I never wanted to be friends with them because. I just didn't like any of them because every time I was one of those guys, like I I thought I had a great idea of the strike zone. Now I might've stunk at a lot of things. Okay. But you know what my one thing was that I was really good at? It was knowing what was a strike and what was the ball. It was reading the ball, the pitcher's hand and knowing what the pitch was going to be, where it was going to go. And if it's a strike or a ball, I might not have been able to hit it, but I knew where it was going. uh, And I knew what a strike and a ball was. And so if I took the pitch and in my head I said ball and that umpire said strike, I could, I, I, that's it. We can't be friends. And so I didn't talk to any umpires. You know, I give them the, hey, how you doing? But that's it. I don't want to know your name. I don't know anything about, the, I don't, I don't, I just don't want to talk to you. So, uh, so I don't, I don't even know all the umpires. I don't pay attention to them. Well, where'd all my super chats go? I can't even read the super chats now because they all disappeared. How do I get back to a super chat? Um, oh, we have so many comments, guys. The super chats disappeared. Can anyone else find the super, the last few super chats and put them in the chat here? Hey, how's your wife and my kids? You haven't played in 22 years. You have a chance at 41? You have a chance to play what? To do what? What legendary manager, thank you, EJ, for the super chat, would you would you have wanted to play for the most? My pick is Earl Weaver, followed by Billy Martin and Sparky Anderson. Yeah, so I have Earl Weaver's book. Um, big fan of Earl, we- Earl Weaver. Like this mic'd up stuff where he screams and yells at the umpires, too. Um, so, yeah, Earl Weaver's a good choice. Billy Martin, I think it'd be interesting to play for Billy Martin. Uh, I mean, all those choices are really good. I guess Earl Weaver. I'd probably go with Earl Weaver. Seemed like a fun guy to play for. All right, Jesse Cohen. Thank you, Aiden, for that five dollars. Where were your wrist injuries? Just one injury that the doctors just couldn't figure out how to fix. Does it bother you today? Uh, yeah. So my wrist still hurts today at times. I actually, I haven't done any um, road to four hundreds because my wrist's been killing me lately. So just so you guys know, my wrist uh, injuries. Um, so I broke my hand first. I don't know if you can see it. Uh, where is it? It's right here. It's tough to see. Right there. See those two lines, like dotted lines going up? I broke my hand right there, got surgery, and then my wrist. So you can see my wrist surgery. The line starts there, and it goes up like this, and it goes over like that. Um, so what happened was with my wrist, I have an arthritic wrist, which essentially... I have my two bones. You have a bone here and then a bone like over here. And those two bones are supposed to have basically like a, like a sack in the middle. And between them to kind of help the bones not rub against each other. But because I have an arthritic wrist, I don't have that fluid sack. And so therefore, those two bones, when I swing, rub on each other. When they rub on each other, and that friction creates like inflammation and which becomes cysts and... That's why I have to get surgery every year. So um, all those years that I missed time, those were just surgeries to clean up my wrist. Basically, it's like a yearly cleanup. Um, So I could start off the year feeling really great, but all of a sudden I would take a swing and get really bad pain in my wrist, and I knew that's when I was all over, and then I have to get surgery again. So that's basically what happened. They told me towards the end of my career, they said that they could take one of the bones out, but they said, we we don't really do this to baseball players. We have no idea. Um, if you would still be able to hit the way you normally want to. And so I, I said, no, I don't want that. I don't want to take the chance. And uh, so I didn't. 
Um, super chats. Let's see. Ben, thank you so much for the super chat. Thoughts on the Pirates? Pirates, uh, well, let's just say they're in rebuilding mode. You know, I don't think... I think it's going to be a little bit till they're back solid again. I don't want to pretend that I know their minor league system. Because I don't. Um, but I think they got a little ways to go. Tom, thank you again for the super chat. Will come on my YouTube podcast as guest procedure. Will come. Will I go on your YouTube podcast as a guest? Uh, so I get asked that question like every day by people. They want me to, you know, go on their channel and podcast and YouTube channel and all that stuff. Um, you can shoot me an email if you want, and maybe I can. I have a couple other people. I'm actually giving a presentation. I gave a presentation last week on Zoom. I have one this Friday. Uh, I have other YouTube stuff, so I'm super busy right now, but I can uh, maybe I can get on there with you. Did I miss anyone's super chat? I hope I didn't. I don't know why on my phone it doesn't let me. It doesn't let me go back. Hey Ray, you got my face as your uh, profile pic. Thanks, buddy. Um, all right, everyone. Before I read the super chat, if everyone could, again, we're going to 300 likes right here, everybody. If everyone could hit the like, uh, smash the like button, that would be terrific. All right, where'd that super chat go, everyone? There it is. Let's get 300 likes. Fliegero, thank you so much for the super chat. Do you ever see the? Vi- did you ever see that video of Earl Weaver and Empire Bill Holler? Is that how you say it? Arguing. It's classic and very funny. I'm sure that's the one I saw. I don't know who the umpire was, but um, so I so I get in these on these weird kicks. Hey, thank you, everyone. We got 300 likes. I get on these weird kicks where um, I become like infatuated with different people. So. Like Earl Weaver, at one point I was, and I was like, Earl Weaver, I got to know everything about Earl Weaver. So I got his book, and I'm watching his YouTube videos and all that stuff. Um, Urban Meyer is somebody. I don't know if anyone likes Urban Meyer out there. I have a man crush on Urban Meyer. So like, I got to a point where I watched every YouTube video on Urban Meyer. Now he's with the, that was when he was with Ohio State. And then even after Ohio State. Now he's with the Jaguars. Like last night when I was laying in bed, I'm just watching Urban Meyer videos all night. So... Uh, um, Christopher Pina thoughts on the Pats off season so far. Whoa, Christopher. Thank you for the question. I'm a huge Pats fan in case you guys didn't know. Uh, I am super pumped for what the Patriots are doing. I know that, that, that next year's cap numbers are going to be uh, a lot worse than this year's, but let's go seven and nine unacceptable. And so I'm pumped up for the Pats. I like what they did. I like the two tight ends. I like the versatility. Um, I'm interested to see how the how the wide receivers do. I thought maybe they would make a little bigger splash. Not that Bourne and uh, Aguilar aren't good, but they paid them a lot of money, and they're not like uh, Bourne's an undrafted guy that was like the number three wide up for the 49ers. I think he's going to be a good player. We'll see. Aguilar, you know, first round, they're okay with the Eagles. Good year with the Raiders. Not like a great year, but, um, you know, pretty good deep threat. We'll drop a ball or two here and there. I like the defensive stuff, too. I'm pumped up. Let's just say that. I am pumped up. Who keeps saying sus? What the, what's that? Suspect? I don't even know what that means. Florence, 47. Thank you so much for Super Chat. Two weird questions. Two weird answers coming. Ever have a fear of getting hit by the ball in the infield? Never. Um, never had a fear of getting hit by a ball in the infield. Do you think leaving players on as backups is wasting? Do you think leaving players on as backups is wasting their talent? I'm not sure what that means. Leaving players on as backups. Um, well, there's got to be backups because not everyone can be a starter. Everyone wants to be a starter. I'm not sure exactly what you mean by your question, but. Um, any advice on pop time? I teach our catchers. I just worked with them a few minutes ago. We had practice not too long ago. Um, I work on getting your feet, like getting in position to throw the ball quickly. So right to left, left to target. Ball comes in the middle of the body. Transfer right about here. Figures on top. Short arm action. Cross the chest and then up. And uh, I mean, that's the main stuff we talk about. Improving your arm strength will help too. I mean, there's two things. It's getting rid of the ball and then how quickly can the ball, how, like how strong is your arm? 
And so figure out what you don't do well or what you do do well. Do you, are you slow with the transfer? You got to fix your transfer. I, I, do you have a weak arm? Got to work on your arm strength. And so um, that's how we break it down. Got a lot of super chats coming through, everybody. Hold on one sec. Bryce Gherkin, go Vikings. Um, love your baseball and softball channels. Thanks, Bryce. Uh, do you have any content on softball pitching or leave me in a good direction? So uh, keep up the good work. Thanks, Bryce. I know nothing about softball pitching. And I wish I could help you, but I know nothing. And I don't even know anyone that could help with that. I focus all on hitting when it comes to softball. When it comes to baseball, I can talk about all kinds of stuff. When it comes to softball, I, I don't know pitching at all. So I wish I could help you. I'll do some research and try to figure it out and see if I can find anything. But thank you so much for the super chat. Tom, how's the Pinot Grigio? This is actually not Pinot Grigio. It's all gone, though. If Laura comes down here, I might have her make me another drink. But... Um, I like Pinot Grigio, but that's that's not it. Uh, Brian, thank you so much for the super chat, Brian. Were most players happy for the season and regardless of outcome to get a break? Yeah, I think in the minor leagues, guys are excited for the end of the season. Um, it's a long season in the minors, and winning doesn't always take precedent over... Uh, most players in the minors are very concerned, uh, focused, concentrated on individual uh, development and... I don't want to say selfish, but you know, you play in the minor leagues to play in the big leagues. You don't play in the minor leagues to win a minor league championship. Now, when you get in the playoffs, all of a sudden players start to try to win games. Uh, but I would say during the season, most players like they want to win. Ugh, they don't want to win. It's not like do or die. Got to win this game. And organizations will even tell you, like they'll say, "Listen, this is about your development. This is about getting you to the big leagues." It's not about wins or losses. But there's going to be managers that get in a bad mood when you lose. And nobody wants... It's it's more fun when you win. It's always more fun when you win. I've been on a couple of teams that have not been good in the minors. It's not that fun. Managers in a bad mood. Um, you know, so you just don't want to do that. You want to win games. But I would think every player would say that if they could go four for four every game and the team never win a game, they're going to go four for, they're going to choose four for four because they want to get the hell out of there and go play in the big leagues. All right, everyone, let's see what we got here. Matt, read our questions. Mike, I don't know if you've realized this, but I've been answering questions for the last 42 minutes. What are you talking about? I got like 4,000 questions. I can't read all of them. Hi, Carter. What's going on? Can a lefty play catcher? I just made a video on this like two weeks ago. Go check it out. It's about left-handed catchers. It, there'll be much more information in there than I can give you right now. I've never had an elbow injury. Nope. Uh, any tips on moving more aggressively to, aggressively to the ball when fielding? Um, when the ball is hit, what I tell our infielders is first thing you got to get to the right of the ball. You got to get to the right of the ball because you're going to throw it left. So you want to be able to get your momentum going left. But you got to get into the ball. So I tell our guys, like, get uh, one phrase I use a lot is get into the ball. I want to take big steps, get to the right of the ball, take big steps, get into the ball, and then I can break it down. Um, other than that, there's not like a whole lot more I can say about it. But you just got to get up into the ball. And then when you break it down, you go big steps to small steps. And then you go right, left field, right, left throw. Cool. Man, you guys are giving so many questions, I can't even keep up with them. It's going so fast, I can't read any of them. Any tips on recruiting? Um, I do have tons of tips, but we have a recruiting playlist on our YouTube channel. Go check that out. That'll Again, that'll be a lot better than me just sitting here. Tips on rolling over. If you're rolling over the ball, two things. One, you're probably either swinging down. So you're kind of, when you swing down at the ball, you, your back gets away from you. And then you're going to roll your wrist early you're gonna roll over the third a lot that's probably the big that's probably what you're doing so just you want to be from the inside and get your barrel behind the ball and get your barrel slightly up through the ball hopefully that helps we have a lot of videos on that how's our travel team looking good today at practice we had a, a six hour practice today for all of our teams we had a lot of scrimmages on the turf field it was a lot of fun but we're looking good Getting ready to go and excited brian thank you so much again for the super chat do you find certain players in the clubhouse annoying you know, I think, I'd say in my career, 
I didn't play with a whole lot of players that I found annoying. Uh, every now and then, it's like anything, you know, like whether you're in school as a student or you're in work as an employee of, you know, what, name whatever business, you're going to probably get along with most of your coworkers and there's going to be some that you don't like. There's going to be some that, that annoy you. There's going to be some that you just, you know, they think they're funny and you don't find them funny. Your personalities don't just don't mesh your jive. And that's the same thing in baseball. Like the one thing about baseball is that you know that everyone has at least a common interest in baseball. Everyone likes baseball. And so uh, usually like most athletes are pretty similar, but there's going to be people you don't like. And just like anything else, um, you know, if you don't like somebody, you just, you don't hang out with them very much. Um, you don't talk to them a whole lot. It's not like all 30 guys on the team are all best friends, you know? So, uh, Fligro, thank you for the super chat. Why isn't Yasuo Puig on a team? That's a good question. I don't know exactly why. I'm not sure what he wants as far as contract goes. So I can't tell you that, um, Number one tip for high school trials coming up. So I talked about this a little bit earlier. I think the biggest thing with trials is just be yourself. Don't try to do too much. Don't try to be more than what you are. You know, don't try to do more than what you're capable of. Um, you know, just practice hard, play hard, pay attention, be the first in line, dress professionally, um, and then just focus on the drill and just do whatever the drill asks. And again, don't worry about who's watching you or what they're thinking because uh, then your your mind starts you know going all over the place. Just focus on the drill, whatever the coach wants you to do, and just do it to the best of your ability. And at that point, that's all you can really do, you know. Um, we've got a super chat, everyone. Oh, maybe we don't. It says I had a super chat, but they're not here. Problem is, these you guys are asking so many questions. Yeah, someone said I missed a super chat. You guys are asking so many questions that the super chat disappears in like five seconds on my phone. Anyone? Can anyone put that super chat again? Whew. All right, everybody. Oh, there's another super chat. Whoa, Jake, thank you much, so much for the super chat. How do you get invited to MLB Showcase? Um, I don't even know what an MLB Showcase is, actually, Jake. So I can't tell you. Um, you know, a lot of people say, like, how did you get scouts' attention? How did you get drafted? Honestly, I just played in college and played well, and then I got drafted. That's that's literally all I did. I never talked. I never like reached out to a scout or anything like that. I just played, played well. They drafted me. It might sound very simple, but that's the way the draft went for me. David, thank you so much for the super chat. Uh, any good academies you recommend in SoCal or OC that share your coaching philosophy and values? There are many bad ones here that that it's hard to bet. Um, I, so I'm not big on California as far as like, I don't, I've only been out there to play for the Padres. I haven't been out there since. Um, and so anything I tell you is basically just going by what I see on Instagram. And that's not really, you know, sometimes Instagram and social media can fool you. So I wish I could help you. Um, who do we play against? San Diego show. I think that's one organization. I honestly, I don't know anything about them other than that, that, you know, they played in Georgia when we were down there. Uh, I, I wish I could help you, David. I'll try to do some research and help you with that. Brian, thank you again for the super chat. Was it easier or harder to date as a ball player? More girls, but less commitment. Um, so I was with my wife my whole career. So um, I never really tried to date anyone. She'd beat me up if I did. Uh, so I would say, um, is it easier or harder to date as a ball player? Well, I would say as a baseball player, like you could probably date as much as you wanted to. I mean... Um, I don't know where I want to go with this question, but I guess I would just say I don't have a lot of experience in that because I was, um, like I said, uh, my, my wife and I were dating and then we were engaged and then we were married during my career. Joe's Joe's 203. Thank you, Joe's Matt. Love your channel. Thank you. I appreciate that. How much each year do retired players get in pension money? Uh, so it depends on how much you play in the big leagues. I played, I have about a year and a quarter, I believe of big league time. And so I will get a pension. Um, but my pension, it, it's your pension is based off how, off how much you play. I think 10 years is full pension. I played one year. So my pension is going to stink. Um, I won't get my pension until I'm like what 60 something. And so how much am I going to get? I honestly don't know. Probably, I think 
probably a couple thousand, <laughs> a couple thousand bucks a year, maybe. It's not going to be very big. Um, so I'm not even like concerned. I, I don't, well, I'm, not, I'm not even thinking about my pension. Uh, if you play for 10 years, you're going to get big pension. You know, you'll be happy when you're 60 something, but I'm not getting that and play long enough. And my minor league pension will buy me like three Tootsie Rolls and a lollipop. Um, you know, so not really worried about that either. I, I, um, did I actually, my minor league pension, for some reason, I feel like they just ended up sending me like, my minor league pension was so low or was going to be so low. I feel like they just sent me like a, um, like a, uh. Oh, what's the word I'm looking for? Basically, they just sent me like a check and were like, here you go, take this. And, you know, it's $6.22 and go buy yourself a pair of socks and maybe one pair of underwear, which I did. EJ Slim, thank you so much for the super chat, EJ. It was my super chat, which indie, oh, thanks, EJ. Which indie league is the best? So, um, I don't know indie leagues. I got call, I got a lot of calls from the indie league. Um, what league is it? Atlantic League? I don't know what it is. Like the Maryland Blue Crabs or something's in there. A bunch of teams called me. When I got released, tons of teams called me from that league. And they're like, hey, man, we really want you to play. It'd be a great place to show teams that you're healthy and you can still do it and all this stuff. And I was like, man, I don't know. I'm not very healthy. But, um, you know, I guess I could try. But I don't know. And I think they offered me like, I think they offered like $800 a month. And I was like, holy crap. Like, even in my last year playing, like as a minor leaguer, I was making probably like a hundred thousand dollars a year, which isn't a ton of money, but to play baseball, it's a lot of money. And you know, what's that? You only play for five months out of the year. So you're getting like 20 grand a month. They were going to pay me $800 a month. And I was like, I'm old. I don't think I can get to the big leagues. $800 a month. I have a wife. Um, I just don't know if I'm going to do this. I went into coaching. Angel, thank you so much for the super chat. What's the number one tip for keeping rotator cuffs and joints healthy? Any subs or vitamins you recommend? Anything you ever saw players taking? So as far as like rotator cuff and joints and stuff like that, I never really took anything. Um, so I, I, I don't know. Um, I know with like most, most shoulder and arm stuff, like we do a lot of, uh, a lot of, uh, J band work. Um, Kind of like light dumbbell, dumbbell stuff. As far as the like vitamins and stuff, uh, I don't know, fish oil, but I, I never really took any of that stuff. The only thing I really took in, during my career was protein shakes. I took a little bit of creatine in the off season when I was trying to put my weight back on. And, um, and that was pretty much it during my career. Brian, thanks so much for Super Chat. Ever heard of... Uh, play or played out of the park baseball PC game. I actually have that game. Yeah, not the latest one. I think I have two years ago. I did play it. It was fun, but I, I got kind of bored with it pretty quickly. Thanks, Brady. Uh, Tom Brady's actually the GOAT, but I'll take that if you say I am. All right. What ages do I coach? So our teams are 10 to 18. I coach our 11 year old team which has 10 year old, some 10-year-olds on it, and uh, I coach our 17s also. We've got a couple more Super Chats, everybody. Johnny, Johnny Rebel, thank you so much. Uh, but there's no question here, Johnny. Maybe someone can tell me what Johnny's question is if they saw it, but I don't have a question here. It just says Super Chat. Oh, there's your question, Johnny. Hi, Matt. What should one do when in an extremely political high school baseball situation where I get zero playing time, but I am the best? So, Johnny... Um, politics are always an interesting thing to me. Um, I do think politics exist in not just in baseball, but in a lot of things. Um, I do also think, and this is not saying that you're doing this, um, but I've been involved a lot where players think that it's political, parents think it's political, and it's not. It's just what, it's just, uh, listen, so I coach high school, I coach travel ball. In high school, my number one goal is to win the game. So when we're making decisions on the lineups and stuff, what I think of is who's going to help us win this game the most. Okay, let's put in those players. Now, someone else might have a different opinion of that than me. But if I'm the coach, it's my job to do that. It's my job to make the decision. You might not like it. You may not agree with it. You might think it's political. You might think whatever. I don't like you, but I'm just trying to win the game. And so some people think, now, now, there are some, I, I have seen it. There are some coaches and teams that are political. They, and it's, it's not 
they're not trying to win the game. There's something else. So I'll, um, on those situations, I don't know what the hell to do. Um, but I always try to keep politics out of it. And I just want to try to win the game. And I always say, I might be wrong. I'm not telling you that I'm the greatest uh, judge of talent. I think I'm pretty good. I'm not, th- I'm not always going to get it right who helps the team win the most. But all I can do is do my best and to play the game to win. I think if you do that, then everyone on the team can respect that. They might say you're an idiot and you don't know how to judge who helps us win the most. But at least I'm trying to, like, we're trying to win the game. That's what we all want to do. So when you're in an extremely political situation, one, I don't know, maybe you're not. You got to keep working hard to get better. Um, Maybe the coach doesn't know what he's doing. Maybe he just, um, basically, like, what am I trying to say? You got to give the coach a reason to put you in the game. Uh, Even if you think it's political, you just got to keep busting your butt. You got to do as well as you can. Hopefully you get a chance at some point. If you're the best, though, if you are the best, you, you, you're eventually going to play. So you just got to keep doing your thing. I don't know what else to tell you, though. You know, don't go to the principal and try to get him fired. I mean, I guess you can if you want to. But Jake, thank you so much for Super Chat. How to improve 60? My 10-yard is fast. Exercises. So I think 60-yard dash is, um, you know, some of it's mechanics. I'm not an expert in running, but you can look that stuff up online. Some of it's mechanics. If your 10 yard is fast, then that means that you're probably, you know, you're probably pretty explosive, pretty quick. And so maybe, you know, maybe it's mechanics that are breaking down in the 60. Um, I always think like getting stronger, more explosive helps with running speed, which sounds like if you're running a fast 10 yard that you must be. So um, I don't know any specific exercises, but I would just, I would look at your mechanics and I would try to get help with, you know, when it comes to mechanics. I'm not an expert in running 60 yard dashes. I, I ran a fast 60 yard dash. I just ran. I don't, no one really ever taught me what to do. Um, the only thing I learned in running was uh, who, t- who told me? Uh, what was it? It was uh, cheek to cheek. That's what they would tell us. Cheek of your face to your butt cheek. Cheek to cheek. That was, my, that was the extent of my running um, mechanics. Tyler Carrington, thank you so much. Why does, Matt, why does Acuna Jr.'s arm almost fully extend when he hits? So, oh, you mean this arm right here, this lead arm? So everybody's different. Some players, when they get loaded, some players are going to have a slight bend. Guys like Acuna, guys like Ken Griffey Jr. had an extended arm. Uh, I'm not going to say that you have to have an extended arm. I'm also not going to say it's an arm bar. Some people are like, oh, you can't extend that. That's an arm arm bar. There's plenty of players that have done that. And so, um, so we talk about the pullback to get ready with the upper body. I'm not going to get into it. You can watch my videos online. Um, but I do think, you know, there's got to be some type of pullback. Just being able to hit here and, and not getting back here is, you know, it's not going to be very help, helpful. Why do I look horrible? I don't know, Dini, Dina. Why do you look horrible? Um, so... Let's see here. Man, we have so many questions here, guys. I'm, thank you for all of them. I'm trying to keep up with them, but this is tough. All right, here we go. We're getting back to them, everyone. I'm trying to slow them down a little bit. Um, so uh, just to finish on that. Don't think that you have to do it. Some people are like, oh, you got to get your arm back. Look at Acuna. But there's guys that don't do that. But watch my videos on the pullback. That'll help you. Dean Summer. Summer, thank you so much for the Super Chat. What was the hardest pitch for you to hit? And do you think is the hardest pitch to hit? Love watching the videos. Thank you, Dean. Um, I thought a splitter was really hard. A really good splitter is tough. The ball just, the bottom drops out of it, especially if guys throw hard. So that's very difficult. Um... That's probably the hardest. Or like a really, really good slider. Oh, man. All my super chats just disappeared, guys. I'm trying to get to them so fast, but they all just disappeared. RC from the NYC. Thank you so much. Hey, Matt. Hey, Laura. What's up, chat? Hope everyone's good. What What do you think is the best age stage to learn to switch yet? So switch hitting is hard at every age. I think the earlier, the better. But like, I stress the guys like, Everyone's like, oh, I want to switch hip. 
Uh, if you want to switch hit, that's fine. I think it's so hard to learn one way to hit, never mind two ways to hit. I mean, I couldn't figure out one way. So I wouldn't like rush to it. But hey, if you love baseball, you love switch hitting, you want to put the work in, it takes a lot of work. But if you want to put it in, go for it. I think, again, the younger, the better. I've seen some guys do it later on. But um, but yeah, younger, the better. How do you put on slow mode? Anyone know how to put on slow mode? Someone just said to put on slow mode. How do you do that? And if you put a super chat, could you like maybe put another comment and just put like in big letters super chat and then put the uh, the person and then um... Keith, thank you so much for the super chat. And your time playing, have you ever faced Felix Hernandez on the hill with Seattle in the regular season or Cactus League? By the way, love the content. Thanks, Keith. So Felix has pitched a bunch against us. When I was with the Padres, we played the Mariners all the time in spring training. I don't know if I ever faced Felix, though, because the problem was a lot of t- my time with the Padres in spring training, you know, even when I was in the big league team or in, or in big league spring training, um, I didn't start every game in spring training. I'd start some games, be on the bench some games, and I feel like I never got the start against Felix, and he'd throw a few innings, and then I'd come into the game in like the fifth, and he'd be gone, so I never did. Watch him pitch, though. He's nasty. Do you always want to live in Mass, or were you thinking about other states? Thanks, Justin. Um, so all my family's in Mass. My wife's family's in Mass. So I would love to live in the South or in someplace warm. I don't like the cold, but everyone I know is up here. I grew, I've lived here my whole life, so um, I never thought of leaving. Next, Maddie Jr. rode to the show episode. I don't know. Uh, that's a good question. We'll have to get them on there once our basement's finished. Joseph Cox, thanks so much for the super chat, but there's no question there, Joseph. I'm sorry about that. It just says uh, you gave a super chat. Brian, thank you again for the super chat. What is one aspect or rule of the game that you would change if you could? Yeah, this is a really good question. I actually like the universal DH. Uh, I don't want to watch pitchers hit. I think it's boring. Nobody wants to watch a guy hit 100. I know some people like to watch Bartolo Colon hit a home run, which is fun. But I don't want to watch him hit all the other times when he can't move or swing or do anything. So uh, I like the universal DH. That'd probably be uh, one that I choose. Um, Off the top of my head, I don't know about any other ones that I would change. How do you tell the difference between a curve and a slider? Just, you know, seeing the ball. Curve's going to have a little bit more of like a hump to it. Uh, Slider's going to be a little bit tighter, a little bit less up and more. Um kind of lateral. My furthest home run, I'm not sure how far it was, but my furthest one is probably at Root Rancho Cucamonga in single A. I hit it over the state over the scoreboard. That was probably the best ball I ever hit. <laughs> Shane says, Matt, why am I a bum at baseball? I don't know, Shane. Why am I a bum at baseball? <laughs> Favorite hit back in high school? I would say probably my senior year facing Jeff Allison, who's a first round pick. Um, you know, the best pitcher I ever faced in high school. And so one of the hits I got off of him, probably my favorite. Why do most kids quit at age 13 and 17? Um, I just think that's when baseball becomes serious. I think the game is inherently tough. It's a difficult game. You know, you can be a great hitter and only hit 300. And so I just think, I think with probably most sports, most kids quitting at 13 or 17 before 13 like everything's fun you know like soccer's fun and football everything's fun you get the 13 to 17 like you got to put in more time you got to invest yourself you can't just like show up and be good and so you know if you just want to when you're young you probably can but so i think that's probably what's that's like the years that separate you okay who's serious about the game who's not serious about the game who wants to put in the work who doesn't want to put in the work I've never been close to getting ejected, honestly, like ever. All right, everybody, I'm still going to keep answering the questions. Um, Could everybody smash the like button? We're going to get over 400, maybe even 500 likes tonight. We're going to go for a world record tonight because you guys are awesome. We got a lot of people in here hanging out. Arthur Livingston, thank you so much for the Super Chat. My high school team has bad record, but I'm a good player. Do you think this will prevent college coaches from being interested? No, not at all. I don't think any college could care. I think they could care less what your high school record is. Nobody cares. They understand that. 
you know, Arthur, you could be a great player and your team could just stink. You might not have any other good players on the team. Who cares? It's not your fault. And so nobody cares about when they when the colleges are coming out to watch you play, they're watching you. They're probably not even paying attention to anyone else. They probably don't even know what the score is. I used to go recruit guys all the time and I never was like, oh, what's the score here? I really like Arthur. I like everything about him. I like the way he swings the bat. He's athletic. He knows how to play the game. Good, got a good baseball IQ. Seems like a good kid, working hard, you know, run the bases hard. Oh, man, but the, his teammates stink, so forget about it. We don't want him. Or, oh, man, but they're losing 7 nothing. Forget about it. No, I've never thought that in my life, so don't worry about it, Arthur. As a smaller batter, should I have a bigger leg load or a quick small leg load? So it, it totally is up to you. I would experiment, see which, see where you feel like your timing's best, see where you hit the ball the hardest. There's no one, there's no cookie cutter approach, and so um, you know I think you just got to experiment. I'll tell you what, guys, my shoulder is killing me from scrolling all day long. Favorite baseball movie, probably Major League One. Mister Super Chat, I'm looking, Chad. There's so many chats, I can't, uh, I don't see any super chats that I missed. Anytime I miss a super chat, guys, if you could, just put it. Joseph Cox, thanks for the super chat, but there's no question there. I don't know why my thing does that sometimes. It just doesn't put the question. If I missed any, just put it a couple times. Write super chat in capital letters. Drunken Hamster, thanks my for Super Chat. What's the best technique to use when executing a Spider-Man on someone and who's winning the World Series this year? Um, can we really go Dodgers back-to-back? -back? Man, I don't know. I think the Yankees could win it. I'll throw the White Sox in there. Why not? Padres? I don't know, maybe. I like the Braves. Mets, pretty talented. I'll probably go with the Dodgers, though. Uh, and the best technique for the Spider-Man is just uh, make sure it's really dark and... Um, um, yeah, just make sure it's dark. Brian, thank you again. How do you know, decide when to move on from baseball in the pros minors? Uh, I decided to move on when I knew that I kind of couldn't, I wasn't healthy enough. I couldn't put in the work that I needed to put in. I didn't feel like I was the same player that I was at one point. Um, and I didn't think I could play the big leagues anymore. Uh, some people get mad, not get mad at this, but like I told my wife, like I was like, I said, if I get to the point where I don't feel like I can ever play in the big leagues, like I'm not going to play baseball professionally. Like I'm, I, I just, I didn't want to just play just to play. My goal was always to play in the major leagues. If I didn't think I could get there anymore, then I wasn't going to play anymore. I went into coaching. I still love baseball. Like I love baseball. Um, but, you know, I played professionally for one reason, play in the major leagues. I didn't play professionally to be like, yeah, I want to have fun and play in the minors and stuff like I, for me personally, I didn't do that. Some, if, if someone thinks that, then that's great, but that's just not for me. Sergio Santos. Thank you so much, Sergio. Do you think the schedule helps players now or not? Uh, what do you mean the schedule? Like the way the major league schedule is? I think that the major league schedule is better than the minor league schedule. I think they're trying to, you know, they, they try to help players as far as travel days and letting them get out of town early and not have to wait late at night and fly through the night and, and all that stuff. I mean, I think Major League Baseball wants their players as healthy as possible. They want them on the field. They want them to perform as well as possible. So I think they're trying to help them. Joseph Cox, thank you. There's your super chat. I can see it now. Have you considered using an axe handle bat to help with your hand issues? They're supposed to be designed for people with wrists and hand surgery. So I do know that it helps with like handmade bone injuries, but I don't think like where my wrist hurts is this. When I go to hit, like when you go to hit and you come in here, well, when you release the bat, when you do this, that bending of the wrist right there, that's where those two bones rub together. That's where my wrist hurts. So I think you could put anything in my hand. I still have to do that. And so I don't think the axe bat would help that at all. All I do is I tape my wrist really tight. A Mazor, thank you so much for the super chat, but there is no question there. Uh, let's see. Where else are my super chats, everybody? Um, Rhett Burgess, thank you so much for the super chat. What age do you notice most development in power? I'm 21 years old and have power in college and worry, it will, worry if it will transfer to the next level with web. Uh, the most power I got, I finally saw the most power my junior year of college and then into pro ball. 
So my home runs went up every year at college. I hit no home runs in high school. I hit two home runs my freshman year in college. I hit five home runs my sophomore year. I hit 11 home runs my junior year. I got drafted, and then my first full season, I hit 21 home runs with a wood bat. So that was the most home runs I ever hit. I noticed my biggest power at, what's that, 22 years old. Uh, Jim J. Jim Fish, thank you so much for the Super Chat. Um, do you say anything when you make a bad play, like your worst throw vid? Like, sorry, guys, or just don't say anything? Does anyone say anything to you? Uh, no one says anything to you, and I don't say anything except I put my glove on my face, and I go, God, God. Get your head out of your ass, man. That's what I say to myself um, in my glove. I talk to my glove. My, um, I missed your super chat, in. I don't see any super chat from you. Where is it? I went to my super chats and went down, and I didn't see any. And put your super chat again. Um... Christopher Jackson, thank you for the super chat. No question, though, again. Um, so if I'm not answering your guys' question, uh, super chats, it just it just says that you gave a super chat, but there's no question there. I don't know why that, that does that. Um, my mother actually said to me, she said uh, back in, like, high school. Oh, here's the end super chat. Hold on. What's the most underrated minor league city and why? I actually like Frisco was pretty good. Uh, I don't know about the city. I'm pretty boring. I used to just care about the baseball field. I didn't really care about the city. I was not a guy that like was like super excited to go out after games. Um, underrated minor league city. Salt Lake City was cool. I like playing there. Here's my question for my super chat. I think Eight Men Out is a great and underrated baseball film. Have you seen it? And what is... Your all-time favorite, favorite uh, baseball movie. My all-time favorite is Major League One. Uh, Eight Men Out. I did see it a long time ago. I'll have to see it again. It has been quite some time since I have seen it. Uh, I never had shoulder pain with hitting, no. My super chat was, what is it like being a hero to America's youth? Um, it feels great, I guess. I like the Gwinnett Braves Stadium, yep. So my mother said to me, she goes, why, what are you saying to yourself? Like, why do you put your glove over your face like that when something bad happens? I say, because I'm screaming at myself. But I do talk to myself a decent amount when something like that happens. Not all the time. But if you see my, if you put my glove up to my face like that, I'm yelling at myself. Keith, thank you again for the super chat. Any language barrier going through my eyes? Oh yeah, definitely. Uh, my first year playing in the minors, like, Half the team speaks Spanish and can't speak English. That's what it felt like about half the team. So, um, Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles, is that what you said? Yeah, great. I love Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles. Um, so, language barrier does... I, I always try... So, I took Spanish in college. So, I always tried to, like, talk to... Uh, talk to all my teammates who spoke Spanish. And uh, I thought that was a lot of fun. I made, I made friends with... Uh, a lot of kids, a lot of kids that couldn't speak Spanish. I think they liked the fact that I tried to speak Spanish with them because uh, it's very easy. Not that you don't want to be friends with someone that speaks Spanish. It's just how do you be? It's hard to be friends with someone you can't communicate with. So I always tried to do that. I feel like they always appreciated that. And players that couldn't speak English, great. Uh, Christopher Th Jackson, thank you for the super chat. My super chat was son changed to a closed stance to keep left side in and worked working, but closed rarely taught and. And kind of shunned us. So here's my thought on this. Um, I personally don't think that like your stance is going to keep you on the ball. Um, I know people say like, oh, closed stance will keep you closed longer. For me, like you can go, you can go open stance and still stay closed. You can go normal stance and still stay closed. So I don't feel like closing your stance is going to help you stay closed. It's not like the full, it's not the placement of your foot for me. It's, it's essentially getting coiled with your lower body and getting pulled back with your upper body, being in good posture. And then, and then staying in that position as you stride, whether you stride open, straight or closed, staying in that posture. So that for me, like, I don't believe, like when I heard, um, uh, Giancarlo Stanton say like, oh, I close. He closes so much to stay closed on the ball. Like for me, I I just don't think that that's like. Uh, maybe for I mean maybe for him that works, but I just don't think that. 
you know, the alignment of your feet has anything to do with staying on the ball more. All right, everyone. I saw somebody in here write that they put a super chat in here. Let me um, let me see if I can find it. Someone said this was my super chat. Joe, thank you so much. Capo Bianco, thank you for the super chat, Joe. There's no question here. I'm not sure if you put a question. If you did, just put it in the uh, just put super chat in the comments. Super chat. What's a great way to increase velo as a high school freshman? Well, naturally, you'll, you'll increase it getting older, getting bigger and stronger, getting more explosive, getting in the weight room, um, playing long toss, working on, you know, your mechanics, your arm action, all that stuff will help you. Thanks, Mark. Yeah, it was a lot of fun. I, uh, I enjoyed trying to learn some more Spanish. Hey, Matt, are you still friends with John Madden? Yeah, I talked to John actually today. He texted me. Matt, would you consider, would, Matt, what do you consider a bust? Uh, I don't consider anything a bust in baseball. Um, I don't know. Like, baseball is a weird sport. 50% of first rounders, I don't even think, make the big leagues. Something like that. So, it's a weird sport. When you get drafted, you're so far away from the major leagues that a lot can happen college game and some players getting the draft out of high school like that's just such so far away from the big league so i don't call anyone a bust how long did i train a day as a kid i don't know i never really trained as a kid i mean i just played the game played with my friends outside and stuff so i made a video on this actually um everyone always says like how many hours do i have to train how many hours do i have to practice like don't count the hours uh if you want to do it do it like you're, the more you do it, the more you're going to get better at it. But if you if you're like logging hours, you're not going to be very immersed in what you're doing. You're not going to be working very hard. So I'm a high school senior at Pinkerton Academy. I lost my entire high school baseball career due to uh, mis continuous misfortune. Can I just send you an email to tell my story? I wish to share. Sure, go for it. Uh, I think feet might keep being the rest closed. It could be. I just don't think like you have to close your feet to keep the rest closed, but you might, I mean, you might be right. For me, when I close off too much, I have a hard time then, like, I feel like it, it's hurting my direction. I get closed off too much. Now I got to rip to get open. I feel like I'll, I'll pull off the ball even more. When I was drafted by the Padres, did I buy an apartment or a house? I didn't buy either. Um, I stayed in a hotel. <laughs> How can I be softer on my front foot while batting? Yeah, this is a great question. Um, it's a little bit hard to explain it on here, but essentially, like, I don't want to feel like I'm pushing while I'm striding. Like, I'm trying to stride, but I'm also trying to, to remain, like, keep my back leg loaded and be back. Like, I'm not going to be way back here, but I don't want to push forward. So that's kind of the key. Um, I've made a couple of videos on YouTube. It's kind of a hard thing to explain on here because I can't stand up and show you. All right, the super chats are coming in quickly. All right, everyone, can we get over 500 likes? That would be terrific. Let's have everyone smash the like button, see if we can get over 500 likes. I would really appreciate that. Samuel Rivera, thank you so much for the super chat. What do you think about MLB pitchers using sticky substances to gain advantage over hitters? Do you see this at lower levels of competition also? Um, when I played, like a lot of people use sunscreen and rosin to create like a uh, kind of like a tacky substance. Substance. Um, everyone did it. So, I mean, there seems to be a lot of guys trying to use different stuff to increase spin rate. I think that, hell, hitting's getting harder and harder and harder. So, yeah, I don't want pitchers to be able to use illegal stuff to increase their spin rate much more. So I don't know how you put an end to it. Um, but I do think there has to be some type of control to make sure that pitchers aren't. It's already too hard to hit. Don't make it any harder. Uh, Matthew, thank you so much for the super chat. Matt, what's your favorite baseball movie of all time? Major League One. 
I love Major League. I have a ton of movies that I love. I mean, I love, we could go over like 10 different movies that I love, but Major League is probably my favorite. Hey, we got 500 likes. Thanks, everybody. Well, I'll tell you what, the most work is trying to scroll through these comments all night long. No hitter, 946. Thank you for the super chat. How do I get better at throwdowns to second? Um, one, just got to do it a lot. Um, I talked about this a few minutes earlier, but the things that we teach it, the very simple ways is get your feet under you. So we go right to left, left to our target. That squares us up, gets our shoulder and our front side on our target. Um, I feel like I bring the ball to the middle of my body and transfer in the middle. Fingers on top, thumb down. I want to have a short arm action to so kind of bring the ball across my chest and up quickly. I think those are, are things that will help you. And then it's just about like being able to work on that a lot and being able to get consistent with it. Ooh. A Mazor, hopefully I said that right. Thank you for the super chat. I'm a Rockies fan. Should I even watch them this year? Can a fan be a sucker? Yeah, so um, I think they're going to be bad, but I don't mean I don't think that means you can't watch them. Um, as a kid, there were years where like you know, so I'm a huge. Uh, I grew up a big Red Sox fan. I'm a huge Patriots fan, Celtics fan. Um, there were plenty of years where like the Celtics were were terrible. And I knew they weren't going to even come close to the playoffs. But I watched them more as like, one, I like basketball. And two, just to kind of like see see the young guys play. See how, you know, basically like having hope for next year. So I think you can definitely still watch. Doesn't mean that they're going to win this year. But maybe you, you know, you still support the team. I don't think you can. I don't think you should only be a fan when your team wins. Like, like the Patriots were 7-9 and nine this year. I watched every game and cheered for them just as hard as I ever did when they were winning 12, 13, 14 games a year going undefeated. Um, you know, it's tough sometimes to watch them, but I'm always like, this past year, I watched them thinking like, okay, like what's, I guess I watch it almost like a coach or like a, an owner or a GM watching and like, all right, which guys are my excited to, you know, see them continue to develop and play next year? Which guys should we get rid of? Um, that's how I do it. John O, thank you for the super chat. Toe tap versus step in to get a 15-year-old a little more juice and help incorporate a coil. Um, so I don't know if the type of load, like as far as toe tap, step in, like I don't know. I, I wouldn't, I can't suggest either one. Uh, I talked about this a little earlier. Like I think a lot of that is personal preference, like leg kick, uh, small stride. Uh, toe tap, uh, no stride. Um, you know, I don't, I don't really try to tell anyone like, Hey, you got to stride this way. What I talk about is four core principles. And so one of them is, is getting the rear leg loaded, excuse me, basically getting coiled. How you get coiled is up to you. Um, you can experiment with different things and see, okay, what gets him coiled the best or her. Um, but just to say like, oh, is a toe tap better than a step in or a leg kick or whatever? Everybody's different. You know, like, you know, Mike Trout has a leg kick. I couldn't hit with a leg kick. Like, so one person might be like, yeah, you got a leg kick because this guy does it. Yeah, but did Ken Griffey Jr. do it? You know, Barry Bonds. You just, you go through enough good hitters and everyone did it, it differently. EJ, thank you for the super chat, dude. Um, would you have rather played a game at Tiger Stadium or Comiskey Park? Um, I'm going to be honest. I haven't thought about playing it yet, either one. Um, where would I have rather played? I don't know. Let's say Tiger Stadium. Why? I don't know. I'm just answering the question. Um, but I honestly haven't really thought about like the stadiums I think about when I'm like, oh man, I want to play there. Like Fenway Park, and I actually have played at Fenway Park before. Um, Wrigley Field, never got to play at Wrigley, would love to play at Wrigley. Yankee Stadium, the old Yankee Stadium, would love to play there. Um, Polo Grounds would have been really cool. Like those are the stadiums that I probably think of. No hitter. Thanks again for the super chat. I'm a lefty catcher, so it would be opposite. Yes, you would be opposite if you're a lefty. Correct.
Uh, you get used to faster pitching by seeing faster pitching. It is true. You do. That does help. Any advice for an average high school freshman pitcher? Yeah, just figure out what you need to work on. What, like, why you average and what do you have to do to be better than average and then just get to work on it. Like, self-evaluate yourself and or have somebody that is knowledgeable help you evaluate yourself and and then get to work. Jed Bang, thank you so much for Super Chat. What makes Nelson Cruz such a great hitter? Seems to be better with age. I think he is extremely, obviously, physical. I played against Nelson Cruz a lot. Guy's huge. Guy hit the ball super hard. Cr- tremendous power. I think he's got a great swing. I think most hitters in the big leagues, if they're a great hitter, they've got a great swing. So I think you put together like this size and strength of him with a really good swing, and you get a really, really good player. Ray Garcia, thanks so much for the Super Chat. There's no question under there, Ray, for some reason, but I appreciate the Super Chat. Uh, I did not play in Trenton and AA. I never, I was only in the Eastern League, is that what it's called? For like a week. Uh, when I was with the Nationals, they sent me there to kind of, I pulled my hamstring and they sent me there, I guess, to like rehab. And then I played there for like a week and then got sent to AAA. Sean Fenton, thank you so much for the Super Chat. Can you explain what hitting through the ball is? Uh, when I think of hitting through the ball, I think of, I think it all starts with your path. And so I don't want to fight for extension out here, but I feel like if I do a good job with my path, getting my barrel, I call it getting turned behind the ball. So I get it behind the ball and from the inside, if I do those two things, then as I continue to work through the ball, I'm coming from the inside and behind the ball, I'm going to naturally kind of work through it. If my path is poor, if I get outside the ball, if I get down to the ball, like now I can't get through the ball because I'm setting myself up on the wrong path. And so I'm probably going to cut across the ball and and I'm not going to stay through it. So a lot of people will say, you know, I see this all the time. You see a player that has a really poor swing. Their path is all messed up. They can't stay through the ball. And coaches stay through the ball. And they take their swing and they can't stay through it. They say, stay through the ball. And they take their swing and they can't stay through it. Stay through the ball. And it's like, dude, like... He can try all he wants to stay through the ball, but if your swing stinks, if you're not on the right path, if you're coming from the outside and not from the inside, you can think stay through it all day long. You ain't going to stay through it. So that's what I think stay through it is, is like being on the right path. Um, stay, being on the right path will help you stay extended through you know, the big part of the field and stay through the ball and on the ball. You know, you hear that a lot of practice. You hear it all the time. Like, hey, stay inside it. Guy gets around it. Hey, stay inside it. Guy gets around it. Hey, stay inside it. Like, (laughs) what are we doing? It's not working. Saying stay inside it is not working. We have to fix something. MGTOW, Michigander, thank you so much for Super Chat. How many years did you have to bust your tail end in the mind before you finally got called up? I got called up really fast, actually. Got called up during my second full season, so... Um, I wish I could say, oh, I don't wish I could say it, but, um, I got called up when I turned 23, I got drafted at 21. So it took me a little less than two years to get called up. Ray Garcia, thank you so much for the super. Day. How can you throw harder, faster as a pitcher? So there's a lot of things depending on what you need. Like some pitchers have really poor mechanics. Like a lot of it comes down to mechanics. How does your body move? Um, So that's one big thing. Sometimes it might be a a strength thing. Maybe you're not explosive. Like if you're, excuse me, if you're athletic, if you're athletic and um, Joe, you put super chat. I see that super chat there, but I don't see the question. I'm sorry about that. Um, if you're explosive, you're probably going to throw harder. Maybe it's like a, a mobility flexibility thing that could hurt you. So there's lots of different things that it could be. So it's important to like try to figure out, okay, what is my deficiency then how do I fix that? But uh, for me, I can't tell you cause I don't see you. Did I ever play at safe go field? I never did. Nope. Also your favorite park, favorite park to play in was Dodger stadium. I just really liked the atmosphere there. I played in Fenway once, not a major league game. It was in a triple a game, um, which was still really, really fun, but 
<laughs> loser channel, I will give one dislike. Well, Sultan, you do that. If it makes you happy, give that dislike. George, thank you for the super chat. College senior here. I really want to hear you, your take on two o takes. My coach is big on it. Even three one takes in some instances makes no sense to me. Um, here's my thought, George. I don't know your coach, and I don't know why he does it. Um, so I, I let's just say this. Let's just say for me, I'll never give a two o take. I'll never give a three one take. And the history of my coaching, I don't think. I, I don't want to say that. Maybe there's will be an instance at some point, but I would say 99.9% .9 of the time, I'm never going to give a take on two or three one. My reason for that one, like I feel like I'm trying to take control of the game too much. Like I played already. Now I'm coaching, let the kids play, stop trying to like hold the bat for them or, or not let them swing the bat. Um, my other thing is as a hitter, you just worked to get the two Oh, right. You worked, you didn't, you didn't swing at the first two pitches um, clearly they were balls. You didn't swing at them. You just put yourself in a position to now get a great pitch to hit. Same with 3-1. Why would I ever take put the take sign on? Um, I'm showing no confidence in my hitter. I'm basically telling you, George, if you, I give you the take, I'm basically saying, hey, George, you just worked to get the 2-0 and 3-1. A great hitter's count. But I don't have faith in you, so I'm going to give you the take because I think if you swing, you're going to get out. That doesn't make my hitter feel very good. So now he gets a 2-0 take and he gets a strike, 2-1. Okay, now I feel like crap. My coach just gave me a take sign. Like I worked to get to this good count. Like why are we even working to get to a good count? So that's my, that's my thought on it. I'm not saying your coach doesn't know what he's talking about. I'm just saying I wouldn't do it. All right, Sultan's going into he's going into timeout. I I don't want to. I've had enough listening to you, Sultan. I know Sultan was. Were you the one person I took deep? Actually, I know who I hit the home run off of, so it wasn't Sultan. All right, let's just scroll through these questions. Got a lot of them. Hey, Mazor, thank you so much. Who's the best announcer in baseball currently? Oh man, um, I have no idea. Um, so I'm really bad with this stuff, like best announcer, best umpires, worst umpires, like maybe this isn't good. I just focus on the players. <laughs> Not Joe Buck. I never played call high school, but I want to play college. Any tips? Well, you got to get some place where they can see you don't have to play high school ball. I mean, it helps because playing is going to help you develop, but you got to get to a college camp, a showcase, play on a travel team. Like, get you have to get in front of colleges. That's the number one thing for them to be able to watch you. Sean Fenton, thank you for your super chat. Could you talk about pitchers getting dead arm? I know most pitchers will work through a period of time when they have dead arm. I never got dead arm. I didn't pitch enough, I guess. And so, I wish I could help you. I'm not the best person to answer that question just because I've never really dealt with it. Um, but I feel like most pitchers just have to work through that period. And then their kind of arm kind of, you know, bounces back. I think, again, this is, I'm speculating here. All right, everybody, could we get the 600 likes? That would be terrific if everyone could smash the like button and get the 600. We're at 550 right now, and we got 300 people in here. Let's see if we can get the 600. I think we've gotten the 600 before. I'm not 100% sure. I think we have. Joseph, thank you so much for the Super Chat. Most overrated, underrated stat for show, from showcases. Um, listen, I'll say this. When I go to a showcase to watch players as a college coach, when I recruited, like I'm looking for, um, well, I guess it depends on the position, but you know, if, if I'm watching a hitter, you know, I'm looking for bat speed. I'm looking for approach, you know, I'm looking for pitch recognition. I'm looking for, um, you know, ability to get the barrel on the ball, um, and so, you know, what stats will help me with that? You know, exit speed and that stuff. Like, yeah, that gives me some insight. But I'm probably never going to recruit based off a of stat. I'm going to base, I'm going to recruit, like, I'm going to take all that in consideration, but I'm going to recruit based off of my eyes. What are my eyes telling me here? You can't really recruit off just numbers because um, there's plenty of players that can put up good numbers, but, you know, good metrics, but they can't hit in a game. Um 
And so, and you can't rely on stats from a showcase because what the guy went two for three in a showcase. Who cares? The sample size is so small, and we don't know who he's playing against any of that. So, honestly, I'm I'm not even going a ton off stats. I know that players put a lot of stock in the stats. And listen, if you can hit a ball, you know, 98 miles an hour exit speed, then I've got a good idea that you got some pretty good bat speed. But I still got to see you play in the game. Um, to make sure all those other things that I just talked about are going to allow you to play, be successful in the actual game. George, thank you for the super chat. Analytical purposes, is he, analytical purpose, purposes, is he reasoning behind it and even argued with him multiple times about it to the point to where I've been called out on it? George, I'm not sure what that means. George, if you can, let me know what you mean by that. I'm not sure. Are you talking about me? I don't know what you're talking about. Uh, Juco, is Juco baseball good? Yeah, sure. Juco can be good. Every level of baseball is good. So I think there's a good level for everybody. Have I ever thought about growing out my hair? Yeah, I used to have really long hair back in the day. Not anymore, though. I'm old now. What made me want to do YouTube? Um, so I did YouTube as a way to, at first, just kind of help people, you know, learn baseball. All my first videos were just on things I learned from my coaches. So that's where it started. And then we started answering like baseball. And then, um, you know, this channel was actually called Touch Em All Baseball back in the day. Uh, we were thinking about cool home run sayings. And uh, Touch Em All, I thought, was a cool one. My dad actually is the one that met that brought it up and so that's what it was until we started answering baseball and then it became you know I just like talking baseball number one but it became a way to like help spread um awareness about kind of what we're doing our teams and all that oh the 2-0 takes George gotcha gotcha George sorry I forgot you asked that um yeah I think um Listen, certain coaches, especially high school or any age, like some of them are very stubborn and, you know, you could give them all the info you want. You know, if someone's given 2-0 takes and 3-1 takes and I, I can already pretty much tell that they're not going to be re very receptive to any statistics that you bring as a counter argument for why they should not be doing that. Um, that's an, like 2-0 takes are aggressive. I get it, 3-0. And I don't even give 3-0 takes a lot of times because, like, for me, I'm trying to develop players. And so I want them to swing the bat. Like, I don't want us to walk. Yeah, you walk if, you know, you're up there to hit. And if you don't get a pitch to hit, you walk. But I'm not trying to force a walk. Like, sometimes, like, we were playing a game this year. And it was a playoff game. It was my 13-year-old team. And the other team literally was just sitting up there taking every pitch. We were much more talented than them, than them, okay? The umpire zone was the smallest zone I ever seen for 13. I never yelled at the umpire, and I was like, this is a joke. Like, it was the smallest zone I've ever seen. Um, and the other team, literally, you could tell their coaches just said, don't swing. So they just sat there. And it was so small of a zone for a 13-year-old game that we couldn't throw enough strikes, so we started walking. So then we got up there. I didn't tell my team to take I said, let's play our game. They throw it. If it's a hittable pitch and you want, it's a pitch you can drive, swing at it. I don't care that the umpire's zone stinks. I don't care that the other team's taken. Let's hit. So we go up there. We hit a couple balls hard. We get out. And then, and then some of our parents started saying, like, we should take pitches. Like, let's take. Like, they're taking. And I was like, no, I don't want to do that. Like, I want to play the game. Like, I'm trying to teach players how to play the game. Um, not just sit up there and make this absolutely ridiculous 13 U baseball, just taking all day long. So, um, I let the guys keep hitting. I don't know. That's just my thought. Richie says, hi, Johnny. What's up? Richie says, hi, just kidding. What all part of Richie, uh, Richie Givens. What all parks did you play at MLB? Um, well, I played it all the, I played at uh i don't know if i'm gonna go through all of them but i played in the nl west parks i played i played at uh texas's park i played at tampa's i played at um fenway i've played at uh 
the Rays Park. I've played at um, Brewers. I've played at Nationals. Um, hey, Tomas. Do I like beans? Not really. Hey, we got 600 likes, everybody. Thanks, everyone. Where did my wife go? She kind of just like, she put my daughter to bed. She does this every night. She puts my daughter to bed. My daughter goes to bed on her own. I don't even know why my wife goes up there. But then she lays down with her and falls asleep every night. And then she's going to come down here in a little bit. And I'm going to say at that point, I'm tired. I'm going to bed. She's going to say, oh, you don't want to watch a show with me? And I'm going to say, no. I've been down here for like hours and you wanted to go to sleep. Now I'm going to go to sleep. Mike W., thank you for the super chat. Hey, Matt, have my college softball have my college softball playing daughter home. Can you give a shout out to Dub Wallace, also second baseman? Shout out to Dub, second baseman, best position on the field. Good luck, Dub. Great name also. Where do you play college softball? And good luck to you. All right, everybody. Just, thank you for Super Chat. Hey, Matt, what's your favorite Italian restaurant in NYC? Well, I haven't been to NYC enough to know my favorite Italian restaurant. I'm sorry about that. Um, let's see, NYC. Last time I was in NYC was probably... That's a great question. I don't know. I'm not sure. Would love to head back there, though. Exit below for a sophomore looking to get recruited to play D1. Uh, off of what? Off of like flips? Um, over 90 is probably a good number. Again, that's not like set in stone. So come visit Canada. How much does travel ball for a 17 year old cost? It just depends on what team you play for. Like every team's different. So I don't know how much. I would say in our area, like probably around $3,000. Um, somewhere in that range, probably. But again, it depends what part of the country you're from. It depends on what that three thousand dollars is going towards. You know, how many times your team practicing, how many tournaments, you know, all that stuff. Do most coaches want you to hit the ball on the ground? Um, depends on what coaches you mean. I played for a lot of coaches back back in the day. That wanted like hard ground balls. I feel like that's changed nowadays, but there's probably still a lot of coaches that want hard ground balls. How do I gain confidence? Great question. I think, um, you know, confidence comes from success, but, it, but you know, more than probably asking how do you gain confidence, how do you get success? I think working hard, being prepared really helps you have confidence, helps me have confidence. Like when I know that I've put in the work and I've prepared for the, you know, the game or the moment or whatever, I always feel more confident. doesn't mean you're automatically going to get it, but, you know, and I think having a, a goal that's not so based on results. So, you know, if I'm a hitter and I only get confident when I get a hit, you know, I'm not going to have confidence very much. It's hard to get hits in baseball. If I have confidence based on, um, you know, my the quality of my at-bats, did I swing at good pitches, um, you know, did I hit the ball hard, did I execute on my plan, like those type of things, that'll give you more confidence. It's hard. It's harder said than done, you know. Guy lines out the third base, hits the ball, rocket, gets caught. It's hard for players to be confident and say, no, I like, I got a good pitch. I put a good swing on it. I hit the ball hard and that's good for me. That's hard. A lot of, pe a lot of players would be like, oh, oh, I'm so unlucky. I'm never going to get a hit today. Like the whole world is against me. You know, a lot of players will do that. So um, you got to fight against that. Which team has the strictest policies? Probably the Yankees. The Yankees made me shave. They make everybody shave. Infield throwing tips. Um, Here's a tip. Go to our infield playlist on YouTube, and I have tons of videos on that. Much more. You can get much more there than you can from me. Hey, Steven, you have uh, our logo as your thing. Cool. There you go. Uh, I haven't really played on all dirt infields, no. Do 
do I consider my career a success or a failure? Um, I, I honestly don't really feel like I consider it either. Like I, I don't, um, I would have liked to have played the major leagues for a longer period of time. I would have liked to have been more successful, but you know, I don't look at it like, oh, I failed. Um, a lot goes into a, a, a big league career. It's not easy to play in a big league. It's not easy to be successful. I tried my hardest and played as well as I could. Um, and that's the way I look at it. I don't, I am not somebody, um, I'm not somebody that like dwells on things and looks back at it over and over again. Like, um, like my wife, Lara, <laughs> she'll continually think about something over and over again. And, uh, I'm the opposite. I get over it real fast. So when something happens, I'm just like over it. And she'll like keep bringing something up. I'm like, how are you even thinking about that? She's like, how are you not thinking about that? I'm like, I don't know. I forgot about it. Like, uh, maybe I have a bad memory. I don't know. But I just get over it quick, move on to the next thing. I, I just feel like there's, I can't do anything to change it. Why am I going to sit here and think about it all day long? Uh, I never saw any players really feuding during my time in the major league. Just see some every now and then guys kind of arguing a little bit. But I never really saw much feuding. How many hours a day do you practice in the minors? Well, the game starts at 7. You usually get to the field around like 1.32-ish. And uh, you're going to take a batting practice and practice. You're going to get ground balls. That all takes about probably 45 minutes. Uh, you can get for early work. So I would say you're probably going to get like... And then you're going to hit in the cage. I would say you're probably going to get like 45... Well, probably like an hour to an hour and a half of actual like practice time before the game. And then you're going to play. Yeah. Glow-in-the-dark wiffle ball. Sure thing. All right, everybody, one last time. We're going to go for 650 likes. If you could all smash the like button, that'd be terrific. You're a new baseball player. You want some uh, suggestions on catching or pitching. Um, we could give a lot of suggestions. I would say, I've given this answer a few times tonight. If you go on our YouTube channel, which you're on right now, and go to our playlist, you can go to catching and the pitching. You can watch all the videos you want on both subjects. And that's probably give you more info than I could give you right now. Uh, one hand or two hand bat finish. What do you teach? So I uh, thank you, Paul, for the super chat. So I don't personally teach either one. Um, I had a coach in pro ball that made us all finish two hands, and I hated it. Um, I actually, this is interesting. Uh, I don't know why this happens. When I hit batting practice, I finish with one hand. When I am in the game, I finish with two hands. I don't think about it. That's just how it happens. Um, so I don't personally do it. The way I think of it is this. You watch major league hitters, some guys finish two hands, some guys finish one hand. So I'm not going to tell somebody like, oh, you got to hit one hand because of these guys. But what about those guys? They hit two hands and vice versa. So um, so me personally, I, I, I don't believe in that. I've never told somebody, hey, keep two hands on the bat. Hey, take one hand off the bat. Is 2.19 pop time good for an eighth grader? Yeah, if it's legit, but I don't know. You could be a very quick on the trigger. Is baseball becoming pay to win? Major League Baseball, you're saying? Can you suggest or recommend how to address and deal with kids on your team with negative attitude and troubles from bringing bringing other teammates down. Um, yeah, that's, uh, I guess it depends on how they're acting. I, I, I don't know. It's hard to say. Um, I guess I just don't stand for like, um, <laughs> the way I always do it. I guess this is good when you own the program. Um, I just tell players, that's not how we're going to act. That's not how we're going to approach the game. That's not how we're going to treat our teammates. Um, if you don't feel like doing that, that's okay. You don't have to, but you're going to get the hell out of here because you're not going to do it around here. <laughs> that's how I take care of it. Um, sit them on the bench if they're not happy on the bench and say, beat it. That might not be what you're looking for, but that's the approach I take. Antonelli softball travel teams. Maybe. I don't know. A lot of people have been asking for that. The show 21 coming out soon. I'll be playing. Yes, I am. Um, 
The beans comment guy. I only got sick that I, I sick that I never uh, said I like beans. All right, everyone. We're gonna go one more question. Actually, hold on. Before I go, we got 285 people hanging out. Thank you so much, everyone, for hanging out. We got 660 likes. We got to get the 700 likes. That might be a record. Everybody, got to hit the like button right now. Hector. Um, Carbajal, thank you so much for the super chat, Hector. There's no question there, unfortunately, for some reason. Here we go. We're at 670 likes. Come on. Come on, Chris Cahill says. Come on, Matt. Time to start earning some of that money. I'm trying, Chris. I'm trying right now. Thank you for the super chat. We got to get to 700 likes. We're almost there. Runner on second and first with the base hit to center field or right field. Does second baseman go to second or first? First. Man on second, single to right. First baseman's the cutoff home. Second baseman goes to first. Here we go. 686 likes. 687 likes. Do we have 688 likes? I just got followed on Anthony Life Softball by Tom McCroskey. It just came up on my Instagram. 688 likes. Anthony Baseball, why you look so horrible? Big nose. I got a big nose. That's okay. I like it. Never been ejected. 694 likes. We need six more. How's my nose now? 695 likes. And here comes Laura to grace us with her presence. 697 likes. And he's asking again about my big, horrible nose. <laughs> uh, someone said, I have, why do I have a big, horrible nose? I don't know. We got 706 likes, everybody. You guys are the best. All right, everyone. How do you train your slider and curveball? Um, yes. You just got to throw it. You got to practice. got to throw it. Laura's come down from her sleep, and she's yelling at me about... I got to help her do something, everybody. All right. Oh, now he's drawing pictures of my nose. Laura's a great person. I don't worry about looks or noses or anything. You can't do anything about it anyway. So. And now Laura is trying to make fun of other people. No, Laura, we don't say that. We just say we're all very unique in our own ways. And maybe mine's that I've got a big nose. And that's fine with me. Hector Carbaj Carbajal, thank you so much. Which team would you go to right now? I'd go to any team, Hector. But if I had to pick one, put me on the Dodgers. I'd like to go to the nice, sunny L.A. and win a World Series. New gear skyrocketing. Everything skyrocketing. How to get less nervous in big games. Uh, don't worry about the outcome. Just play the game. Don't worry about who's watching. Just focus in on what you're trying to do. That's it. Easier said than done, but... Um, yeah, I've been on here for almost two hours, everybody. What a night. I like all kinds of music. And everybody wants Laura on here. Well, she's right here. She's. Uh, I'll give you a play-by-play. She's picking up the kitchen table. She's bringing the kitchen, the plates over to the dishwasher. And nope, she changed. She put it in the sink. She's throwing out the trash. She's working hard over there. I got to go help her. All right, everybody. Thank you so much for all of your super chats. Thank you so much for all of your questions. Um, this was a fun night. I'm going to go help Laura. Uh, she's picking up the kitchen and I've got to go help her pick up the kitchen also. So thanks, Ben. Glad I made your night or your day. Um, we'll talk to everyone later. Any last words, Laura? Any, any words of wisdom for the people? Good night, she says. Wow, what a ripoff. Oh. All right. Thank you, Amazur. And uh, let's, uh, we'll, we'll do this again maybe next Sunday night. Let's plan on next Sunday night. Thanks, Chris. We'll talk to everyone later. Good night.